Hello, this is Trinice DuPlessis with Cooking with Love, and this week's featured dish will be a New Orleans favorite, seafood stuffed bell peppers. That's right, and we're gonna show you how to make that when we come right back. All right, we are back, and now we're gonna show you the ingredients that goes into this awesome, amazing seafood dish. Now we have our raw shrimp, deveined, peeled, and washed. Then we have our claw crab meat. We have our shrimp stock, and then we have our basic fresh seasonings. We have our powdered seasonings. And on this end, we have our garlic. We have breadcrumbs and we have parsley. So I'm excited about this because guess what? All of this is gonna to mesh together. And I wanna say this, growing up, as you notice that a lot of my recipes are seafood dishes because I grew up on seafood dishes. My grandmother was heavy handed with, with seafood dishes, especially bell peppers. Stuffed bell peppers is one of my favorite dishes and I want to show you how Oratree Catering makes it. Now, what you don't know is my grandmother basically used the ground beef in her bell peppers, but I'm just using seafood. So I do both, but I want to show you the way how we do it. Um, it it's just something that I love and I just want to share that with you that stuffed bell peppers is a New Orleans dish. Uh, many, many people, families fix it. Most of the time people fix it during the holidays. But if you're a person like me that likes to have it all through the year, this is a perfect dish for you. So let's get started guys. I just wanted to tell you that backstory. So let's get started on our Italian parsley. I just need a, this is a beautiful piece of Italian parsley. It is gorgeous and normally when I pick up Italian parsley it's really small but this is really really full. So I'm just going to take an end part of that for this Italian parsley here. All right. Now that looks good. I'm going to move that to the side. So everything is already washed as you know. Make sure you wash your your seasonings because um, you know everybody's hands has been on it so you just want to make sure you're uh, using cleanliness while you're cooking. So the parsley's been washed off already. Now, I had mentioned about the ground beef. Um, the reason, I just want to explain that to you too. The reason I don't really do the ground beef stuffed peppers anymore because I'm eating less meat. Um, to each his own. If you still want to do the ground beef, that's fine, but I'm eating less meat these days so I, I prefer the seafood. But the ground, my stuffed ground meat peppers are, are amazing as well. Now, trick to that, you don't want your, your stuffed bell peppers with the ground beef to taste like hamburger meat. <laughs> Meaning you don't want to overpower uh, the ground beef with your seasoning and your seafood because it's just going to taste like a, 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 a hamburger patty. So, so your key is don't use that much ground beef and make sure you use lots of breadcrumbs and lots of seafood. And then you'll have that seafood taste. Now, why am I using um, sh uh, shrimp stock? I'm gonna tell you a little trick on that too. Sometimes your pocket may not be able to have crab meat or have all the ingredients you need for your stuffed bell peppers. That stock, the shrimp stock will definitely give it a seafood flavor. So you want to definitely have that potent flavor for your, your seafood peppers because you may not have your crab meat, you know, because things can get really expensive. Now, I, I don't recommend imitation crab meat, but if that's what you want to use, that's fine. But we don't use imitate, imitation crab meat. We actually use lump or claw. Okay, so that's just a little tip for you. All right, so we got our parsley over. Now we're going to get our yellow onion. I don't know if this onion is going to make me cry, <laughs> but it's always good to have a good, really good, strong onion, but it's okay. So we're going to cut that onion really fine, really, really good there. And if you notice, I don't have green onion this time, right? But this is the way that we do it. We just use yellow onion. The more the seasoning, the better, to me. That's just the way we do it. We like fresh seasoning. We love fresh seasoning. So I got the onions over there. I'm gonna do a little bit more of this onions, this yellow onion, all right? That looks good, looks good. Look, this looks like a good, healthy onion, okay? So I got enough of that. And you can use a food processor. I say it all the time, I say it every show. This is therapeutic for me. 
but if you want to use a food processor if you simply don't have time and time is going to get you, you can use that process and it's going to speed things up really quickly. But make sure that you don't make it into a, a, a puree because we want to see that seasoning in your, your stuffed bell pepper. So don't, because sometimes that, that, that um, food process can really make it mushy and you don't want to do that. All right, so now we got our garlic. I got our garlic cloves washed and cleaned. All right, let's get this garlic down. Garlic to me wakes up the food. It really, it's a strong ingredient, but I've noticed when I've cooked, when I have very, very little ingredients and I just needed to put a, a meal together and I just didn't have time to go to the store, I have used garlic powder. Now we're going to have, we have garlic powder here and I have used garlic powder, granulated, uh, granulated garlic, um, and it still tastes great because when you're a cook, you can make you can make magic, even with the littlest ingredients. But I did notice a difference without the onions, the fresh onion, uh, I'm sorry, the fresh garlic. Okay, so if you just can, simply cannot do the fresh garlic, then I understand if you need to go to the powder garlic, that's fine, all right? But again, fresh seasoning makes, wakes the food up. That is the key, that's what we promote here on Cooking With Love, is the fresh season. And I'm trying to get everybody back in the kitchen to get back to the basics of truly using fresh seasoning for your foods so you can wake up your foods. Now, when we come back from break, we're gonna have all this cut up. All right, we're back, we're over to the stove now. Now we're gonna put all our ingredients in this pot. So I got a little olive oil that I'm gonna to add to this. I already had some in there. Get that a little hot there, and now we're gonna go ahead and get our cut up seasoning. Doesn't that look beautiful? Right, it's sizzling. Yes, when you hear that sizzle, you are cooking with grease. <laughs> All right, now I got my big, big girl spoon right here. Mm -hmm. Ooh, this smells good already. Now you can use grapeseed oil, olive oil, canola oil, anything that that you use. But I've used olive oil, um, virgin olive oil for the saute this, okay? It smells good. So we have our red bell pepper, we have our onion, we have our garlic, and we have our parsley all together. Oh, that smells great. I'm gonna saute this about one more minute, and then we're gonna get our shrimp in there, okay? Mmm, smells great. Make sure you have a large enough pot to put all your ingredients in because you're going to have to put breadcrumbs, shrimp, um, your saute seasoning, you have to put your shrimp stock. So you want to make sure you have a big enough pot for that, okay? It's very, very important because you want to make sure everything gets cooked, okay? So now I'm ready for my raw shrimp. Ooh, ready to go in there. All right, here we go. Now, now I'm going to add my Claw crab meat, okay? All right. Let's get every drop in there, because guess what? Crab meat ain't cheap. <laughs> get every drop of crab meat in that pot, baby. All right, here we go. Now, let's keep on cooking this, okay? We're still sauteing with the crab meat and shrimp in there, all right? Okay, now I want to add my powder seasonings, okay? And then we're going to get those breadcrumbs in there. I'm going to add a little bit at a time, and I'll come back and add the rest. Okay? All right. Add a little bit at a time. And then when, when I put my breadcrumbs in, I'll add the rest. Okay, so let's keep it rolling. I need a little more. I'm going to turn this fire up a little more. I need a little more olive oil, just a little bit. It smells amazing. It smells so good. I actually, I, I, like I said early in the broadcast, this is one of my favorite dishes. And this is a lighthearted dish. It's not really heavy, even if you're just eating it um, alone. Uh, some people like to eat it with crackers. Um, you know, crackers, because it's almost like, uh, you know, a stuffing or something like that. So, so really, you can eat it how you want to eat it. But I love to eat 
the, uh, the bell pepper, the whole thing, actually. Okay, so let's get, because we want to get this to uh, be pink, you know. Before I add my breadcrumbs, I want this to get pink, okay? All right, it smells good. Let's give it a few more minutes to get pink, and then we're going to... That looks so good. All right, it looks good. Okay, so I'm almost ready to add my breadcrumbs, okay? Now you can get Italian breadcrumbs. Uh, you can actually season your own breadcrumbs, whatever, however you want to do it. Um, just have some nice hearty breadcrumbs for your for your meal. So listen, um, Ori Trees, we use uh, we like to use Italian breadcrumbs for this dish. So it's already a little bit seasoned, um, has the parsley and the little herbs in there. So that makes it even taste better. So get the Italian breadcrumbs for your stuffed bell peppers, seafood stuffed bell peppers. All right, so that's looking good. It's looking good, it's getting pink. So now I'm ready to add my breadcrumbs. All right, oh boy, that looks great. Now I may not need um, all of these breadcrumbs, because I'm about to add my shrimp stock. So let's see. How did I get shrimp stock? By boiling the shrimp heads, okay? And remember, I told you to always keep you some stock handy, and this is gonna make your meal taste so good because of that seafood flavor that you want. All right, so now that I added that stock, I need a little more breadcrumbs. Yep, I need some more breadcrumbs. So I'm gonna add a little more breadcrumbs because you want it to be like a thick, not too thick, not too loose. Okay. Oh, that looks good. All right. Now, now I'm going to add the rest of my seasonings. All right. Everything's going in there now. All of it's going in there. My dry parsley looks great. Now, everything's in there now. Now I can really get the business by meshing everything together. Now, everything's in the pot now. See how that's looking? I can use a little more, uh, little more breadcrumbs. Okay. I can use a little more. Actually, I can use this entire bowl. How about that? We're gonna use the rest of it. It's not gonna hurt anything. There we go. Oh, this is so good. Now I'm gonna finish stirring this. When we come back, we're gonna show you how to stuff them. All right, we are back. Now we are ready to cut our bell peppers and stuff them. And I wanted to mention earlier, um, some people love to parboil their bell peppers to soften it a little bit and for um, you know less cooking time. However, Oratory Catering, we don't parboil out. We just let our cooking time be a little bit longer if you have the time. So if you want to parboil your bell peppers, you certainly can do that. Um, that's your choice, but we personally, we don't. So now we're going to cut them in half, right? Now there's another way that some people cut their bell peppers from the top, but we like to cut them in half, all right? So you're gonna get all the white um, part out of your bell pepper. Make sure you cut it out because what you wanna do is make sure it gets all in there because you don't wanna not have enough stuffing in your bell pepper. So we're just gonna get those little white parts out of there and um, get your seeds. Some people like to eat the seeds, but you know, it's totally up to you. So we got that one cut, and then we're gonna do the yellow one, all right? I'm sorry, we're gonna do the rest of this one. Let's get the rest of these bell peppers. These are nice, some nice healthy uh, bell peppers. You know, uh, we like to find the prettiest and the biggest bell peppers we possibly can find. Even though this is a lightweight meal, we still want a nice size bell peppers to stuff, okay? All right, so I got all of that out of there. So now, now we're gonna do the yellow. Everybody don't do colored bell peppers, that's just me. Um, but it just gives it a beautiful presentation to have. Um, so normally I'll have red, I'll have orange, I have all different colors, but today I just stick with the basics with the yellow and the green. All right, the yellow bell pepper is a little bit sweeter than the green, but that is totally okay, because you're still gonna taste the ingredients of your stuffing. Um, I love it for presentation and I love it for taste. It just gives it a, just diversity, you know, I'm just so diverse with, with my cooking. I, I, you, you, of course, you've, you've gotten used to that by now. But yeah, the yellow bell pepper is a little more sweeter, 
And uh, you know, if you wanna use it, that's fine. So let's get the rest of this out of here. All right. Smelling good. If y'all could just smell this stuffing, it just smells so divine. All right, so I got all of that out of there. Got my seeds out, so now I'm gonna move that to the side. Now I'm ready to stuff. I'm ready to stuff it, stuff these bell peppers. Okay, now I'm gonna move them over to my pan. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna move the pan here. Now, let's get it on in there. All right, so now I got my green. Now this one is pretty deep, as you can see. It's really deep, it's beautiful, it's perfect. And some people eat the entire bell pepper, meaning they eat the green bell pepper and they eat the stuffing. It's healthy, it's good, it's, it's not a bad idea to do that. And I think that's why some people like to parboil at first because they wanna eat the whole thing. But you know, by me cooking it for an hour and a half in the stove, um, the bell peppers do get soft. And you wanna put a little water at the bottom of your pan so they can soften, okay? Oh, that's looking good. Still hot off the stove, smelling divine. And I'm gonna to top this with uh, some dry parsley. Oh, that looks gorgeous. Y'all see that? It's beautiful. Line it up there. There you go. So now we're going to our yellows. Oh, that looks great. Mm -hmm. Now, as you can see, I'm gonna have a whole lot of stuff in left. But uh, that's okay. We're going to put it to use. <laughs> but we just stuffing four right now, okay? That looks great. You see how the red is popping out um, from the stuffing? The red bell pepper is popping out. That's, that is so beautiful. And, uh, you know, I love the way that looks and tastes. In, uh, I use a red bell pepper a whole lot in a lot of my foods. Gumbo, uh, stuffings. All right, now, I got it all stuffed, guys. Now, traditionally, people like to top their stuffed bell peppers with breadcrumbs, but I don't. I just wanna top it with parsley. But when we come back, this is gonna be in the oven, it's gonna be ready. All right, we are back with a very, very special guest, radio personality, New Orleans born, Miss Kelda Summers is in the building. But before we have a conversation with her, we're gonna dive into this amazing meal. We have a seafood bell pepper with an amazing salad. And we will return, we're gonna have a conversation. All right, we are back with our very, very special guest, Miss Kelda Summers. Miss Kelda, thank you for coming on the show. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you so much for having me. Um, I am a New Orleans girl, born and bred, lived all over the city. Uh, most of the housing developments, uh, you know, Lafitte, the Arbaville, the Desire. Actually, my, um, my parents uh, had a store uh, in the Desire called the Busy Bee. So uh, grew up kind of with that whole entrepreneurial spirit, that hustler spirit, right? Mm -hmm. um, I have about 30 years experience in uh, broadcasting as a radio personality. Wow. And also I have, you know, experience in sales and uh, also development, nonprofit management. So just kind of doing a lot of different things uh, over the course of these past 30, 35 years. Wow, you have an extraordinary resume. I'm just so impressed already. But I want to ask you before we get deeper into the conversation, what did you think of the meal? Delicious. So, you know, I love a stuffed bell pepper. Yes, you do. My mom used to make it with the ground beef. Mm -hmm. um, and then some of the season, some of the, you know, seafood would be in there. But okay. Like mix it all together. Right. But it was mostly ground beef. These peppers are all seafood and it is delicious. I mean, they're so delicate. I loved it, so thank you for having me. <laughs> and, and, and I just want to tell you, I, I, I knew you loved them, and that's why I made them, oh, especially for you. They are phenomenal. Thank you. Well, listen, I want to get into, I'm so excited about your business. We want to have a conversation about this beautiful business. Explain to us exactly what it is, and, uh, and we could talk about the vision yeah. behind it. 
um, we came up with the idea. We were we were offered this building as a place to have a business. At first, we wanted to do a restaurant, and so when we went to see the building, we noticed that there were several other restaurants in the area, and we did not want to you know compete, bring another restaurant there. But we were thinking, you know, what's good after people eat? And so the idea r literally was born when we went to visit and saw the space and. It was so different than what it is now, but we I immediately had the, this vision of like a little speakeasy type place, mm -hmm. kind of dark and cozy with real cozy seating. So with, <laughs> that's amazing. So what, what was a hobby? Well, pastime for your husband turned into a business. Right. Yeah. That, that is amazing. So you want it because you because i know you and your husband you guys are cooks yeah so would you say your first love was to get a restaurant we really wanted to do a restaurant and um you know it's still something that we want to do we mm -hmm. have a concept and we still want to do it but we thought it'd be great to kind of dip our toe into this whole you know business deal and you got to go through a lot of um requirements uh, with zone we had to do some zoning changes and things like that we had to go through the licensing process and so it was a good way for us to learn how to start a business right and how to start a a, a food service business because you know you have to go through the health department and all of this so it was a small enough venture but you still had to go through all of the 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 legal work in order to get it and so i think you know, now if we decided tomorrow we wanted to open a restaurant, we'd be better prepared for it, right? So there you have it. That was a smart thing to do, to get that business going, and then it'll be an easy process. Let me ask you this. Being an African-American business owner, would you say it's a harder process to get such a business as yours? Because that business, I've been into your established several, several times, it's uh, it's all it's in a league of its own is what I want to say. Thank very you. professional, very friendly. Would you say was it a hard process because of being black woman, a black man? Would you say that? So both my husband and I, you know, we we're we're known in the city, and so yes. when we went through the process, um, you know, there are people that were saying, you know, call me, we can help you do this stuff, and we were deliberate in not trying to use any connections that we had to go through the process any easier than anyone else. I will say it was difficult. I don't know if it was because I am a um, black woman or because we're African American. Um, I, I just think it was because maybe where we were starting the business that we had some challenges because there was zoning issues that we had to go through. And then that whole uh, one-stop situation at, with the city, it was just a lot of red tape that we had to go through. I don't think it was because of being a black person okay. now. As we start operating, we started operating the business, uh, people would assume that the owners were white, right? They would assume that. And so I, I, do notice, I did notice that there was, you know, different clientele that would come in, you know, that were not black, they would come in and they would be so surprised that, hey, oh my God, these are the owners. They'd be so surprised. So that was kind of weird and unique. People assume ownership is of a certain race because of the type of business. And, and, and that was that was weird. Um, and it still happens to this day. People will come in, you know, we're, we're highly rated on social media. We were named one of the top five in New Orleans, wow. uh, you know, by NOLA.com. And people will still come in, people who, black people, white people who come in, and it's, it's me and my husband. So, you know, it's, it's, that's the only challenge. And it really has been a challenge more so of a revelation that people will come in and say, oh, you know, this stereotype is wrong. So that, I think that's been a good thing for us. That is great. But Ms. Kelda, you also bought us a dessert. Tell us what we have right here. You said to bring my favorite dessert. <laughs> and I am a serious cake and ice cream girl like I love it for birthdays I just want some cake and ice cream my favorite cake is wedding cake oh. so I got you some little petit fours Ooh. here with the almond you know mm. flavor and then I got just a plain little yellow cake my mom used to make cakes on Sundays okay. bake the cake with the little jelly in the middle Ooh. you talk about a good cake Ooh. and a cup of coffee that's that's all I need and Thank I, so you. that's what I brought today Thank you, but we're going to take a break and eat this amazing dessert. And when we come right back, we're going to dig 
more into a conversation with Ms. Kelder. We are back. Kelder, that was amazing. I enjoyed that Delicious. dessert. I want to talk about the location, the historical location that your business is in. Let's talk about that. So we are located on Bayou Road, 2513 Bayou Road. The road itself, that street itself is like the street responsible for the French Quarter. Like folks would get off, back in the day, folks would get off their boats on the bayou and they would literally walk from the bayou onto this ridge, which is Bayou Road, and walk down that street to get to the river. So what happened was you would have free people of color who were merchants along that little ridge, mm -hmm. on Bayou Road, mm -hmm. selling their wares, you know, food, yes. um, beverages, you know, everything. And so that became like a market space for free people of color, that area. Mm -hmm. So. Fast forward to today, you have the owners of a lot of the property on that who are African American. They own this property, um, all these little storefronts. And so they were like, you know what, we want to kind of recreate and bring, you know, black folks back to Bayou Road mm -hmm. uh, as business owners and merchants. And so they have been very deliberate in trying to place Bayou Road as a like a black mini black Wall Street kind of thing. Wow. So on that block you have seven black owned businesses, minority owned and female owned businesses. Yes. And it's just been thriving. It's been thriving. So you have restaurants, you have a, a men's spa, you have the bookstore, yes. their community bookstore, right. you have a Caribbean restaurant, an oyster restaurant, yes. you have a dessert place, which is, you know, it, it's right smack dab in the middle. And it adds, I think it adds a lot of value to the block. It adds, how about it adds a lot of value to the city. Thank you. To, to the state. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when I go on Bayou Road, I, I, I have this euphoria feeling. And we thank people like you that have the vision to, to put those businesses on that block so when people come there, they feel at home. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the clientele. We are... You know, we're targeting mostly 35 year olds and up. However, we found that a lot of 25 year olds and up are coming in because they, yeah, they love it. We have a ton, as a matter of fact, we just had a big party um, this past weekend and there were, you know, several folks in that age bracket uh, under 30 that were wow. there. So we get a lot of them wanting to come in and do either uh, bridal parties or bachelorette parties or bachelor parties or what have you, birthday parties. So the, the age the age group is like starting at around 25 and up. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm actually amazed at that. Yeah. I'm thinking 38 and over. No, it's, it's you, fun. So you have 25 year olds. 25 year olds. Um, you have to be 21 in order to get in. Yeah. But um, again, I think a lot of the 25 year olds, like I said, they appreciate the fact that they can come in and they like talking to us older folks, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they sit outside they and yeah, they my learn. husband has a lot of, you know, knowledge to impart. So I think they appreciate sitting around the, the, the elders in the community and learning more, but it's a very diverse uh, clientele. We, we have trivia nights on Fridays. We're picking that back up next Friday okay. and they are, they love that. So, it, you know, we're doing things to attract all sorts of uh, different folks in different age brackets. That's, that's a blessing. I'm happy to hear that. But we want people to know where they can locate you and come enjoy in the atmosphere. Let people know where they can find you. So you can come to 2513 Bayou Road. It's just off Broad Street in between like es near Esplanade and Broad, uh, not too far from the fairgrounds. And we're open from right now during the pandemic, we've been open from 6 p.m. until 11. Our traditional hours are from 4 p.m. until we close. Well, Kelda, I'm certainly um, elated that you came in the studio today to discuss your business and to share a meal with us. This concludes uh, another session of Cooking with Love. Make sure you guys follow Oratory Catering on Instagram and follow Cooking with Love on YouTube. We'll see you next time.